There is a monk present now amongst us. Please, can you give us some... Bigotry, execution and a royal romance all await you in the next hour. Welcome to Most Haunted. This week, I've brought you to Blackpool in Lancashire. This may be one of Great Britain's most recognisable coastlines, but our investigation is centred on this beautiful manor house six miles inland. Its white, almost angelic walls may purport to an austere home, but as we're about to find out, this house has blood on its hands. That's why we've come to investigate Mains Hall. Settlers first claimed this as their land in the 11th century, and although a hall first stood near here in 1236, the exact date of Mains Hall's construction can't be confirmed. This, the Great Hall, is a decade-old reproduction of the original that stood here until 1853, but unfortunately, its only hint of activity nowadays is in hosting weddings. And until a fire in December 2002, Mains Hall itself acted as a hotel. The building is now used solely by its owners, their children, and of course, the plethora of ghosts that are said to roam their beautiful home. Yet despite our stunning surroundings, we are in the midst of a mixture of emotions, those of love, faith, betrayal and murder. Mains Hall near Blackpool, um, an exciting place. Um, before I even start, uh, I'm getting extremely enthusiastic about the place. Uh, it certainly goes back to the 1500s. There's a possibility it may be on foundations from the 12th century. Priest holes, hanging, drawing and quarterings, who knows what went on here in this building. It's played quite a significant part in two of the Jacobite Risings, 1715 and 1745. The main bedroom is host to a number of paranormal happenings. The ghost of a tall lady has been seen walking around the bed. Also, the latch on the door rattles as if someone's trying to get in. And the indentation of somebody sitting on the bed has been seen many times. Also, a playful poltergeist takes objects from this room and they reappear in another part of the house. And also, male and female voices have been heard in this room when no one is around. We've had many um, paranormal experiences here. Uh, when we were a hotel, we often had guests um, coming to us and telling us the same sort of stories over a period of about 10 years. We've heard of children sitting at the end of, uh, of a bed in one room, and then the same story being told a couple of years later by a totally different guest. Um, when I first bought the place, uh, we had a problem with the uh, gas boiler in the kitchen and I got the engineer to come and have a look at it and he was telling me that the place was haunted and he used to come to um, uh, meetings in the, in the old cocktail bar and they all used to see a cavalier at the same time and I just dismissed it as being a bit of a story. Um, he also said that there was activity on the stairs which I didn't really believe uh, but his leaving uh, remark was um, have you ever been able to get a clock working in the bar and since I moved in uh, I'd been trying for weeks to get this particular brass clock to work and never been able to do it. Some super ghost stories. For many years it was known as the Monk's Hall and there were supposedly monks here, stories of monks being murdered here. There's a door that certainly goes back to the 14th century that is supposed to be covered in the blood of monks. There is, on their land, an area of woodland supposedly monks buried beneath these trees. Apparently many people in the vicinity of this place have seen dark figures wandering around the trees at night. Room 10 is currently under renovation but has a fearsome reputation. Many people who spend time in here become depressed and the door slams shut for no apparent reason. The figure of a large man has also been seen in this room. 
Very often people talk about children trying to take hold of their hands when they're walking in various parts of the house as well. There's been cavaliers seen in what used to be the bar area. There have been shapes on the staircases. Uh, we have things moved, um, monks in the grounds. There are so many things that are seen here, we could just talk about it all day. <laughs> here in the entrance hall, the ghost of a man has been seen sitting on this settle. Also, children have been seen in this area and walking through this door into the back corridor where a nursery used to be. It's also said that several monks were killed in this area. Could it be their dark shadows that have been seen floating across this floor? Is this just an old house full of memories? We have 24 hours to find out. And with nearly every room within this Grade 2 listed building thought to have hosted supernatural activity, parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe is as keen as anyone to see what the night will hold. For me, this, this investigation is, is really quite extraordinary because there's so much phenomena that has been reported in so many different rooms and really odd phenomena like clock stopping, uh, uh, being poked and touched, and I'm really excited about tonight. I'm equally excited. You've got, like you say, you've got a whole gamut of experiences. You've got apparitions, you've got auditory phenomena, you've got objects being moved, but, yeah, you've got some unusual things too. You've got doors opening, like you said, you've got the clock stopping. It's it's, it's going to be a great evening. I think it's going to be a really good investigation. Do you think because the family are refurbishing the whole house, that has an effect on the activity that's been reported? Within parapsychology, there is this idea that if any refurbishment is going on or any change to the structure of an old building, that perhaps that affects the spirit in a way. Perhaps they get upset of, about the changes that are being done and they actually cause the activity as a result. Almost. Um, trying to raise awareness that they're just not happy. Now, if there's any truth in that particular argument, then hopefully David or Gordon would pick up on that. I think we're in for a really good night because of the amount of phenomena that has been uh, reported here, and it, it happens on a very regular, frequent basis. Um, and hopefully add all the phenomena that, that's been reported here. If, even if we get one, that would be just amazing. Yeah, all it takes is one where we have the footage of it, we've got an objective measure of it. It takes that one piece of evidence for people to actually sit up and go, wow, they've caught something, so that'd be great. A small corner of this house may still stand bare, but will we find beauty elsewhere in this ancient abode? And with mediums David Wells and Gordon Smith ready and waiting to step inside, it was time to let this allegedly haunted home do its best. You know, when I came in here, the oddest thing happened. It's almost like the room was full of people. I'm not talking about the crew. The crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking it's like there was everything in here, from children to women in different eras, met, and they just went <laughs> when we came in here. Right. You know? It was like they went scurrying through different doors and, I mean, everywhere, up, down, sideways. And these are spirit children, or you're, you're seeing the memory of... of, of no, the... this this was grounded. This was the maddest thing I've ever seen. It's, it is like they went... <laughs> so there's lots of them, then? Grounded spirits? I would say, yeah, there, there seems to be... Yeah. As I walked in, it's almost like they were... They were literally standing watching us come through that door. And when they saw us, they just all went, one. Well, I just think it's the first time. Do you see any any specific uh, any connections with this particular room or any hauntings that go on here? Or the only thing I've got here is there's one austere male, and I don't know because sometimes we get this where they act like a guide around the house and they just follow us around and keep us safe and keep us right. But you know he's a bit more than that. He's almost like someone who'd welcome you into the house, but in a terribly professional manner either a former owner, perhaps, or a... Um, can you see him? I can see him, but it's a black... It's one of these black-shaped jobs. And probably back about... maybe 300 years ago, so he's he's not a recent... But he's... And is he grounded here? Is he here all the time? Yeah, he seems to be... He seems to be... He seems to be... The word I would use is he seems to be in, in charge. 
With David's first few steps inside this building honing in on its distant past, we can draw a possible connection to the part that this area played in the Jacobite Rebellion that began around 300 years ago. But will the black shape of a man also reflect his mood and his manner? This may be a beautiful house, but how much danger have we stepped into? Can you give us some... <laughs> Most Haunted's pursuit of paranormal evidence has brought the team to Blackpool. Mains Hall is our base, a place that sheltered battle-weary soldiers, priests and monks from religious hatred, as well as even witnessing an 18th century romance that scandalised and jeopardised the destiny of the monarchy. And David Wells' short walk from the entrance hall was about to be rudely interrupted by a chilling sensation that leaves him feeling particularly vulnerable. Oh. What? What? Singing monks. Ah, uh, singing monks? Yeah, the witch is my thing for monks. You know, the voice that could go around. Oh, so it's, it's saying to you there's monks symbol, here? Symbolic, yeah. 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 But are you picking up on a group or are you just picking up on one? I'm picking up on the word, so it's, it's telling me... It's, it, it feels, this, this part, certainly, of the house, um, feels religious. Is possibly the. I can sense a lot of them around. And Cath, there's a Cath, Catholic feel to this part of the house. They're showing me the word. The word I'm getting is martyred. But they're showing me them, like you know, like oh, crucified. crucified, or or pinned. Strung up. Well, keep, they're what? murdered. They're murdered. Right. Um, I, because the problem is, you get images, and it's down to me to find the words. Then, um, it's almost like they were they were brought here for rest and recuperation, and during that period, perhaps some of them were slain, or right. they were slain. Okay. There, there's death, and basically, the whole experience of being a monk here is not very nice. So I just want to touch this door. Mm. There's something triggering in my mind. Um, I don't know if you recall uh, the live in Derby. Do you recall it? Yes, and you had the... Piece of wood. Portal, yeah. That's the image they're putting in my head. Oh, God. So the same image they're putting in my head. That's and where they were hung... Hung, hung drawn, drawn quartered. That's right, on a board. Yes. Yeah, and they, so yeah. the same thing with this. And that, that's what, what's pulling me towards it, that kind of horror on this. This door is horrible, it's vile. So it, like I, oh no, I don't even want to do it. To be honest, it's too horrible for me to even do. I can't. I can't put my back towards it. It's too vile for me to do Go that. On, do it. Go on. It's just. I have got in front of me a load of soldiers, and they're literally laughing, drinking, whilst I'm strapped to this door. Right, come away. I see you getting all, ooh. You get all sweaty and horrible. Yeah, it's uh. vile, that is absolutely vile. I could see them as plain as day. You are right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm sorry. It's all right. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. As we have just witnessed, sometimes a medium can get a little too close for comfort to the energies and emotions that still exist within a building's fabric. This was once the back door into Mains Hall, but it is also strongly believed to have served a second purpose, that of restraining monks as they faced a tortuous execution. And as he moves upstairs, another intuitive vision appears to David. I'm picking up a woman She's very beautiful, very beautiful, in a kind of supermodel-y kind of way. Mm. She is, um, at this moment in time, sat in the window. Where? She's sitting there in that window. She's sitting here? Yeah. And she's, she, she's literally here. This is where I'm seeing her now, whether it's grounded or not, but she's literally there. You can sit down. It's all right. It won't disturb her, I wouldn't have thought. I won't disturb her. They gave me the name Marie. Now... It's slightly cooler there, Kieran, but then we are by a window, I know that, it, logical explanation. But it is cooler. Well, I'm just going to measure the temperature first. 
Don't she's, talk she's to She's looking her. out this way. She's, she's certainly aware of my presence, because she's being very... She's a very gentle lady. She's a very nice lady. I'm going to sit there. Yeah, it is cooler, but then remember we're right by the I window, know. aren't we? Yeah. It's not... So am I sitting where she is? Yeah, but she's turned the other way. She's looking out the window. Can I just peer out the window with that? Sorry, I'm just stick my head out the window. No. Because she's she's peering. She's looking this way. She's looking out here through like Elizabethan shaped windows. So there used to be windows here? Yeah, I suspect that's sealed up. Richard, we need to check and see if there used to be windows here. And she's Yes. 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 No. Yes. There was windows there. There's two, oh, two, there's standing. two million, big million window through there. Honestly, promise. Oh yes. And what kind of windows? A million type. Elizabethan. What was Elizabethan? Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Elizabethan windows. Yeah. <laughs> now, how impressed? Come on. That's very impressive. <laughs> that really is. Does that symbolise that she's waiting for somebody? Here. Yeah. And I don't know whether they came down round and came in here or something. It feels. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it feels as if she's waiting for him to write. The only name I'm getting... We've had this name a million times over the last... It seems like it. It's a Fitzherbert. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that, is that it? Yeah. And I'm, reticent, that it? I'm reticent to say it, because, I mean, how many it's Fitzherberts have we met? I knew nothing about them. So they are connected to the other ones? Oh, they are connected ah. to the Fitzherberts of Tissington Hall. Right. That's but, where I've heard but it. That's you where remember, there was two sides, and this is the Fitzherberts, the yeah, Catholic Fitzherberts, from here. Right. That's why... Because I heard it and I thought, oh, I'm sure that's Tissington yeah. Hall. And then as soon as you said it, I thought they're connected, there's a join here somewhere. Just as Mains Hall lies discreetly tucked away from any passing outside interest, many of this building's biggest tales were also cloaked in mystery, particularly the forbidden and ultimately failed love of Maria Fitzherbert for the man who was to become George IV. The problem wasn't their love for each other, as they actually did get married. Once more, though, religion ruled, and the man who would be king had to turn his back on his Catholic wife and this, her home, and marry a Protestant instead. Is that why Maria lovingly and longingly waits for him to visit her once more? It was a faithful theme that Gordon Smith would also sense as he began his reading in the ground floor library. When we come in here, if you want to just sort of like sort of be still for a little while and... Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things I, I feel about this house is that there's not really anywhere in particular that, that just jumps out at me, but I feel the whole house has um, sort of been... Ex or people have experienced haunting or haunted feelings within various areas of the house. Nothing sort of stands out immediately that it's just this room or that room. I do get pictures, and uh, as cliched as it sounds, but I do get the sense of sort of monks and the clergy and things with this house. I also get the sense of a woman, uh, nothing to do with the monks. Right. But in the back of my mind, I keep getting this is where I'm saying there's layers of things. I get the sense of a woman. What does her face look like? Not old. Right. Not an old woman. I feel. Middle-aged. Yeah, and this monk figure, they can't see each other. Uh, They're I from different time yeah. periods. Yeah. Are, are, they, are, they both, uh, are they both sort of here all the time, or are they, are they coming in no, and coming No, I wouldn't out? say. Again, to say they're here all the time, I mean, we're talking about something that doesn't deal with time. It's like ghosts don't deal with time. And with clear similarities between both our mediums and previous eyewitness testimonies at Mains Hall, we move upstairs to see what Gordon would feel from a room where a ghostly female apparition is seen and doors attempt to open when no one is there. It's funny, it feels diff different for me coming upstairs in this house. Again, when I was picking up a lady downstairs, that kind of essence I pick up again. So the lady again. I do feel as though the lady's more, uh, I don't know, sort of predominant up here. Mm -hmm. I also feel sounds up here, people hearing sounds. Mm -hmm. I feel as though there's been reported phenomena of sounds. I can hear a door lock, but the old-fashioned way, it's not like a locking door, it's like a snub or a bolt or whatever it would be, like, like, like the old that. things, right. click, click, so click, click. Is it like that? Like that. Yeah, right, okay. that's... And I feel as though there's some connection to that. The woman's presence is very strong up here. 
This is just one of the occurrences that mystified both guests and staff when Mains Hall acted as a hotel. However, fire signalled an impromptu end to this role in 2002, something that Gordon was about to sense on his next port of call. What are you sensing? It's a strange one because I'm actually smelling burning in here. Just smouldering fire, smouldering things. I feel as though there's been a fire, if not in this room, then certainly in a chunk of the house. Right. Around about here because this has happened here. Right. I, I can tell you it has. Yeah. There's been I, I, I have no yeah. idea at all. Yeah. There's been None whatsoever. fire here, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. OK. And it's you... all I get in this room, though. Following this fire, the owners took the decision to stop accommodating paying guests and to use this handsome home for their own private use. Room 10 may still stand redundant, but as Gordon was about to reveal, first appearances can be deceptive. Any activity that would occur in this room or, that, or memories of, of activity that you can pick up on? I, again, I get a sense of spirit around this room because I can feel myself being touched. I can feel a spirit energy around me. Who is I actually it? just feel it's like cobwebs all over me and that lets me know there's somebody close to me. Do you know who uh, it is? No, it's nothing to do with me, so I don't know that's definitely relating to this house. But somebody wants to be noticed in this house. It's a strange house to me because I don't know if it's back to front, but I do feel as though there's, in two different times it's faced different directions. Like, that's absolutely correct, yes. The, the, in fact, the front of the house was the back. And, and, vice and it's as though seeing it in yeah. past time. People, look, more than one person, so there's, there's, a, there's an inn or there's a, a pub or there's something, because it's seeing people going out the door, but I'm seeing people coming in the door at a different time. It's bizarre. It's a hard one to explain, but it's two different times I'm seeing the place in. But when would this so far hidden energy choose to make its presence known? With darkness quickly descending upon our investigation, we could now switch into night vision and start our first vigil. Both of our mediums have opened up some extremely interesting facets from this building's past. So why not team both together and expectantly wait for Mains Hall to respond? And with the main bedroom reputedly a regular source of phenomena, Gordon and David lead Richard, Ian and I in there and wonder what the night would hold. So who's in here then? I've got giggling. Again, I'm here now. Mm -hmm. I've got giggling. But I feel it's a wee girl. What era? And playful. Yeah. I mean, Same era as the woman. Long dress. But a sick kid. Mm. This kid had a sickness. Because anyway. see, when I was saying long dress, I just saw like night clothes. Right, so like a white nightgown. Yeah. Any name? <coughs> Any name with her? Well, the name keeps coming through my head now, and it's Eleanor. Eleanor. What's that? Was that a bat? That was you. That it was, was not. That was no, you. That is something behind this. Oh, that was that so loud. loud. Oh my god. Oh! That? So Surely it, it must. It must be the wind yeah. blowing on. Oh, what's your? Sorry. That was. There's no one outside. Beastie. I wonder whether the window was wind was blowing. <laughs> on a seal. One the trees these. aren't moving there, the wind's the... the, the, the air <laughs> totally like that. That, that was horrible. Do you think that was her? Mm -hmm. Ask her to do it again. Come on, Eleanor, do it again. I've got her hair cold. You've got what? I've got her moving around here. Mm -hmm. Where? She's here. She's here, She's right there. there. Well, I just, she just moved past me, so she might have gone. Yeah, I've got us actually in front of Wigan there, as you said. Though. But, but Gordon, you're saying that that was definitely her. Yeah, and I bet that oh. other people have heard that kind of noise. But how much longer would this childish and playful encounter last? Would the ghosts of Mains Hall grow in size, stature and danger? More heart-stopping, most haunted moments were about to transpire. Something went down the screen. It went out. Sunseekers may continue to flock to Blackpool's beaches, but just a few short miles away, ghost hunting is top of most haunted's agenda. 
beautiful by day, Mains Hall is a very different proposition at night and its history may add weight to our initial feelings of trepidation. So whilst Carl and Stuart tentatively head towards the empty corner of the house that is currently undergoing renovation, I join David, Gordon, Kieran and Kath in the ground floor corridor that houses a remnant from the hall's sometimes not so illustrious past, an apparent blood-stained door that witnessed the murders of many monks. Because you get a really heavy feeling from this. I mean, I can feel it in my, my head now, this horrible pressure. I don't like it. I really don't like it. I know I'm almost... You're making me feel on edge now. Pack it in. Standing like this, it feels like I'm standing in a firing squad. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what it feels like. Do you hear that, David? As mm. though somebody has been killed against this door like this. But with more than one person. Because it's almost as though I can feel and hear and see people kind of coming at me from from a distance. I also get a really strong sense of being either strung up or pulled by the neck. My neck's going to one side as well. And it's just, again, reading the memories here. There's something very nasty happened here. For, for the viewers back home, um, what you're seeing now is me and Carl, but you're seeing us in like um, a green or a grey foreground. My face is green at the moment, but when we turn away from the camera and look elsewhere, it's complete darkness. It's like having your eyes closed now for the, you know, for you guys at home who have got one of these, you'll understand what I'm talking about. For the people who don't have one, well, that's basically what it looks like. Complete <laughs> Was that what you did? Touched and poked and prodded on being... Oh, this is stupid. I don't believe it. I'll make a fabulous seance table. That's a brilliant idea. Different levels, but similar emotions, from Gordon's channeling of the pain inflicted against this door in the past to the present-day tension one floor above. Whilst my group move through to the dining room, Carl and Stuart climb the stairs that lead into room 10. It may lie empty, but is it haunted? Careful. All right. Yeah, that's the last one, mate. No way. What? Oh. Mate, I can't see where the I'm going. Oh, what? What? what no. no. What? There's a, you see where? the window there? That's the only light I can see. Right. I, and I swear to you, something just moved in front of the fucking thing. No, I swear, and it, it would have gone to the left in that room. Shove the camera to the left. Nothing can get out of the room anyway. I'm panning round, mate. I can't see anything just yet. Let me just refocus here. I know this sounds really silly. <clears throat> see it? I feel like I'm vibrating. Yeah, but I'm feeling vibration again. Does that sound really peculiar? No. I feel like my chair is moving. But I know it's not. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like this just maybe mm, impressing. really it's slight not. vibration. Yeah. You look different mm. to me. Mm. I, you, I look, you look to me as if you've got... I know what you're wearing. You're wearing a black cross of a shirt, but you look to me as if you're wearing a gown. If you're there, show yourself to us. I'm scared. Ooh, I if think... monk is there, what? Something just went by the screen. How about physically? How do you feel, if you were to describe how your body felt physically yeah. now, how would you describe it? Bigger, shorter, fatter, thinner? This is really odd. It feels like if you were to wear a corset, corset yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it, I actually feel, t it's like it's really tight here mm -hmm. and kind of I, tight in at the waist. Mm -hmm. You know, very... Happy, sad? Happy. I don't feel at all, I just feel really alive and happy and, and where a minute ago I was like, oh, I feel so tired. 
And now I feel kind of like yeah. up and, you know. Buzzy. It's really weird. Is there anything else coming to you, Vane? If I'm honest, no, not at the no. moment, no. She looks that's different. Do you know, that's, yeah, that's David, that's saying. the story of this place. You get something and, and then, then you get nothing. Yeah. Talk to us. Please, can you tap on the table? Did you get it? No. That's right. What was it? No. <laughs> I felt my voice changing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but that's how they do it. And, Is you know, it? It's exactly. Yeah, when you're talking and they'll suddenly <laughs> drop your voice. Well, it or did, it dropped. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please, can you tap on the table? Please, can you tap on the table? Something went down the screen. It went out. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have you got? What have you got, mate? What have you got? Talk. I kid you not. It was something went right across the front of that screen and it looked like it was... Sorry. God, that was, that, was, that was it again. It was your end. Thank you. Thank you to the spirit or spirit that's in this room with us. I, I, something just came right across in front of the screen. It was really close, like it was... Um, literally right, right, right in front of it and it just... It came across. It, it looked like a cobweb, but there's no cobwebs in here. I mean, it would, it would be that big, it would be on the floor. It was only later on that we realised that these two simultaneous vigils seemed to have captured phenomena at almost the same time. I was already feeling a little freaked by the movement of my chair, but also the change in my voice, at a time when David was visualising me in a gown. Yet they were individual sensations, whereas something even more intriguing had just occurred in Room 10. This is one of the most talked about light anomalies that our near century of investigations has captured. Our edit allows us to flip images as well, and here we think that a face can be seen at the head of this object. Not only have we viewed this footage from every available angle, but our parapsychologist Kieran has since further analysed this footage. So what did he feel had moved past Carl's camera? His answer awaits you at the end of the show. Not surprisingly though, this footage grabbed everyone's attention, not least the two investigators directly involved. Do you honestly think we've actually just caught something on camera that we shouldn't have caught? And for the first time as well, in Most Haunted? Is that a manifestation? I don't know. I need, to, I, I need to look at downstairs. All I know is I'm freezing cold. I don't like it up here. I want to go. I want to leave this place. I want to get out of this room. I really do. Despite their understandable apprehension, Carl and Stuart did later return, along with everyone else. And in an accelerated attempt to find who may lurk in here, David and Gordon open a seance at the same time as a nearby radio is switched to an empty frequency. This white noise technique is often thought to tempt astrals to communicate, and despite the protection that both mediums had offered our group, Room 10 was ready to throw more emotions our way. I just, I don't know about you, Gordon, but I'm just really aware of quite a few of them in the room. Yeah. It's busy. Yeah. It's like we've been squashed closer together, isn't it? And they're around us. Strange kind of vision I've picked up. It, it, only because you said what you said about it's being squashed in. But I've actually got a vision of going back to soldiers. Old soldiers. Is it? Yeah. Was it the radio? Yes, the radio. So why should it do that? Mm. It shouldn't do. Or well, it could be the energy. It's, I can get in this Stuart name and I, I, every time I get it, Keep something's going. happening. Let's try again. <laughs> could do, if that was you, the effect of the radio, and you belong to the Stuart clan, please. Yeah, it's got... Listen, <gasps> banging. Yeah. I mean, we're a bit far flung for you. Stuart country, but I'll tell you, there's a connection to I can feel a vibration on the floor. The Stuarts, the Jacobites. Jacobites, yeah. Jacobites. Keep going. Listen, listen to that tapping. Are you here? Are you here to protect someone? Could you just tap a few more times? Are you here to protect someone? Yeah. Can you try and touch one of us gently? 
I always keep burning up for yeah. really, really hot. Mm. Your radio might just died, David, in there. I just put, I put a new battery in it when we are downstairs. And it's just gone. If you're taking energy from us, then at least pay it back in some way. We're just blowing in my face. Don't blow in my face. Blow in someone else's because we know you're here. Gordon and I know you're here. Please give someone else some evidence. Move this coldness to someone Thank else. You're okay, right, Darren. Right. You're okay, remember. All right, Rach. Where are you? What are you picking up, Darren? What are you All feeling? Right. All right. There it goes. What's the matter, Rach? There's the radio started. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make sure somebody's with her. Yeah. Yeah, just Come straight, just make sure she's you did ask that you'd do something yeah. 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 Once she had recovered from her sudden and unforeseen outburst, Rachel still wasn't able to clarify exactly what had caused her to cry so uncontrollably. She did, however, refer to a sound, that of Scottish music. So can we directly link this to the Celtic connections that our mediums were also sensing? Or had some sort of suggestion influenced Rachel? Add this intrigue to the electrical interference encountered on both the radio and John's monitoring of David's clip microphone, and you'll see why we had to ask for more. But how much more turmoil has yet to be experienced at Mains Hall? Please, can you give us some... <laughs> Mains Hall is a Lancastrian home that has been billed as the perfect romantic retreat. Yet most haunted night vision vigils only seem to have encountered the pain and suffering attributed to the monks who were murdered here centuries ago. Separately, David, Gordon and now Rachel have all experienced a deeply disturbing and emotional bond with this land and the atrocities that history suggests happened here. Not to mention the amazing anomaly captured on film by Carl in Room 10. We all felt that this location had more to offer and thankfully, following a short rest, Rachel was able to continue. I think I'll make a fabulous seance table. That's a brilliant idea. And having taken Gordon's advice on board, we reconvene around the dining room table, which now had the monk's door lying on top of it. And, as it soon transpired, our final vigil would prove as important to our investigation as any of the others. Are you feeling anything, David? Hmm. I can't move my face. My mm. face is really... Good. Why can't you move your face? I just feel as if there's someone else's face on mine. I have seen David's face change completely. There's this long, thin face appearing. Are you feeling the spirit person, David? Hmm. Hmm. That's freezing. Can you let him talk through you, David? Well, that's up to David if mm. he wants to allow that, but he doesn't have to do that. I think a lot of the stuff that we're picking up here as well is just... It's almost, let's say, commentary from this. It's like we're seeing different yeah. people, different faces. Because nothing's static for long. There is one. I'll just see if I can... If this is the monk that's coming through, because I'm looking for habits and things, and I'm actually seeing a picture of him being stripped. Mm. There is a monk present now amongst us, please. Can you give us some... <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. Don't right, 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 right. panic. Um, try not to panic because David's in a state. You just be calm, David. It's okay. You're all right. You're okay. okay. Try and put your hands back to, to David until he comes back for that, please. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> right, come on now. Just let, it, okay. let the feeling come through. Please just take it. <laughs> Yeah, it's horrid, isn't it? Who are you, brother? It's almost that like he's remembering all this stuff. 
Who are you, boy? <laughs> that was a grab for help. <laughs> Grabbing you for support, wasn't he? Yeah, it's not a bad thing, yeah. That's a man that was terrified. <sighs> Oh, sorry, it's just so horrible. Don't be sorry, that was... What did you see? What did you see? Oh, God. It wasn't even what I saw, it's what I felt. Yeah, what did you feel? Oh, it's just such pain. So, going to hit fairly quickly, isn't it? Or, mm. is I mean, it? I was watching, basically, with somebody running, screaming, mm. being tortured. Oh. It was like, it was the only way to transform yeah. it. Yeah. The only way was to go through it. Well, not, yeah. I didn't go through it like he did, but for him to go through me, because yeah. normally we can send them to the light, but mm. he just wasn't enough. Has he gone to the light? Mm. I think so. Mm. I think, it seems to me, the sensation I was getting is there's, there's a grave in the grounds, a mass grave, where there's at least half a dozen of them. Mm. And then they've been buried in the ground somewhere. Wow. You're right, yeah. There really? is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Over by the trees. That's there. excellent. There's 16 trees over there and uh, on the on the ground, end of the grounds here. And um, monks are supposed to be buried there. And that, we felt, played a part in the majesty of Mains Hall. Its remnants are tangible and apparently hidden whilst the rumour that this line of trees marks the graves of murdered monks may remain just that. The interior of this location simply thrives on the emotions of its past. Mediums can find barriers deliberately blocking their sensory vision in some locations, but we literally only had to touch the surface to feel an outpouring from those who feel trapped by this property. Whilst the romance that once ruled this roost hasn't been forgotten, it's religious persecution that still beats strong amongst the astrals that share this ancient home. And amidst all this pain and suffering, what had we captured in room 10? Well, we, we've come to the end of, of another um, eventful shoot, to say the least, at, at Mains Hall. Um, various anomalies have, have, have happened during the night. Um, one, the fact that, that David Wells actually picked up on um, a door that is, well, so ancient, it's reputed to have bloodstains on it. And they say that for some reason, we don't know what, that, that either a monk or a priest was actually murdered in some way, some horrendous way, on the door. and and. David was drawn down the corridor straight to this door and, and was, was quite overcome, actually, um, by the door and, and said that, that there was most certainly death or something that, that had taken place um, on the door. I have got in front of me a load of soldiers and they're literally laughing, drinking, whilst I'm strapped to this door. But the climax of the whole evening just has to be the, the light anomaly that uh, Carl and Stuart caught in, in, the, in the bedroom. Something went down the screen. It went out of what? Now, this particular anomaly is quite unusual. We're very used to seeing circular orbs or reflections, things that can be easily explained away. With this particular anomaly, my first reaction was that it could be cobwebs. However, because of the recent renovation, it makes it quite difficult or less likely that it is a cobweb, and certainly the movement of it is quite unusual. In addition, we can discount other explanations such as reflection from car lights outside, reflection from the camera itself. So at this particular point in time, I am at a loss for an explanation. Whilst its outwardly charm cannot be called into doubt, questions do remain on what exists from Mains Hall's tempestuous past. Is this a setting still haunted by those who fought for their cause, but ultimately lost? Until next time, sleep tight.